tonight as we stand before you as your sons and your daughters and we thank you for your spirit your power your glory your fire your fullness that overshadows us that that penetrates into every dimension of our being consistently all the time non-stop 24 7 as we live and move and have our being in you that there's a constant dimension of infused knowledge being poured into who we are as spirit beings since there's no there's no cavity there's no there's no time and space within the spirit man that all of who you are can be put in place into it but when it comes to the soul and the body there's limitations father we need to lift those limitations so i ask my father that in this time of engaging this time that you've opened up these gateways and these doorways from the dimensions and realms to us the melchizedek order that's been set in place in creation and of course several other dimensional orders that's been placed into creation because of sun's awakening there's much change that's coming, Father. There's much shift and there's extreme authority that you've given to your people that's coming into play, into creation, to bring restoration to all things. And Father, tonight as we begin to understand what the Melchizedek order in creation will mean for us as limitless, immortal beings, immortal, not, not, not immoral, <laughs> immortal, uh, standing in your fullness, standing in the image, presenting you as priests to the people, standing in a dimension where we are kings in creation where we govern we've taken back what belongs to us father understanding the power of being an oracle speaking the voice and the words and, and the breath of yahweh into creation to frame the life and the blueprints that were set from the heavens to the earth and of course we understand that we need to begin to walk and work as legislators in its full measure to do the things that need to be done in creation as you have set out for us to do father we are excited we love you we praise you we ask that you will Bring a dimension of revelation to your people tonight that is uh, an overwhelming expression of your beauty and your power and your fire. We love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Can someone mind switching the lights on for me in the back there, please? It's very dark. <laughs> Just one side's usually okay. All right, that's fine. You guys okay with that? Yeah, yeah that's great. Okay, so we're going to carry on a little bit with the Melchizedek order. Now, what I've done over the last couple of weeks is really is, is to set in mind for you a picture of what you need to engage. That's really what it's about. Now, remind yourself that everything we do at this point in our walk is to engage the Father, to engage Yeshua, to engage Holy Spirit. You know, everything that's going to open up for you, everything you're going to understand, every form of revelation that's going to come in for you is going to be in the dimension where you sit and engage with one of these parts of who Yahweh is. Now I say that because once I step into the Yad Hey Vav Hey, I remind myself that it forms a window, a porthole, a gateway for me to go into his presence. Once I'm in his presence, there's restoration that needs to come to who I am as a being. Now I remind you that I have I have 12 strands once I step into Yahweh. And now I want you to understand that when I begin to have the revelation of moving in him, living in him, experiencing all of who he is, those 12 strands are fully restored. And uh, in this order that we are setting into creation through Mount, Mount, Melchizedek, we need to begin to understand that Yahweh has for us um, a limitless, immortal life. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. The deeper you go in relationship with the Father, the more um, have come, the more you will know um, and you will understand that the Father has two priorities on his heart. And it is the restoration of our sonship and restoration of all things. Yes. You guys understand that? Yeah. So everything he desires is for me to be restored in him. Now remind yourself that he speaks and he says, let us create man in our image. Give them dominion over the earth. Now that is the two dimensions we're talking about. I have to be in his image That's right. and I have to bring dominion to creation, to the earth. And of course, through this order of my Chetanek, I begin to understand my sonship. And really, um, if you understand the, the, the crowns, the crown of righteousness is like the intermediate lock. Yes. You can have no other crown without righteousness on your head. That's right. So the enemy knocks righteousness off, and it's not something that can actually be taken from you. It's a lack of understanding. Correct. Hence, he says, uh, my people die because of lack of knowledge. If you don't understand what righteousness is, if you don't understand the beauty of being aligned with the Father and you have that crown on your head, nothing else is going to fit on you. And sonship beyond the veil is the same thing. If you do not understand your sonship and stand in the full glory of who you are as a son to the Father, 
You will not be able to walk in, in, your, in your priesthood. You will not be able to walk fully in the king, king that you are or the kingship that you are. You will not be able to understand you being an oracle and the power that comes with you speaking as the father in creation. And, and you will obviously not understand how to bring uh, the, that which needs to come into creation through legislation. So it's the understanding of these two things and constantly finding yourself engaging with it. It is to get to know the Father. Now, if you don't understand the 12 strands, I'm just quickly going to remind you. It is I am body, soul, spirit. Okay, but I am back in Yahweh. And He is righteousness, joy, peace, way, truth, life, holiness, justice, judgment. Those 12 dimensions because I live and move and have my being in Him. So I am body, soul, spirit in Him, righteousness, joy, peace, way, truth, life, justice, judgment, holiness. Twelve strands. Because I'm in His image, so those are attributes that I carry in Him. That's right. And we understand that it's also plumb lines, nine plumb lines for me to engage. It's also skins that prevent the enemy from getting to me. So it's an image of restoration that comes, but it is in Revelation. It's an engagement. It's in getting to know Him. And, and I want to remind you guys, getting to know the Father, if your relationship is not always changing, you're not getting to know Him. Now, if, you, if you have children, you'll understand what I'm saying. So, as a child, there's a time in, in, your, in your young child's life where you are like best buddies. You're playing around, you're, you're wrestling, you're having fun. But you are the disciplinary and you have to be harsh. Sometimes you have to smack the bottom. Sometimes you have to shout, scream, set out rules, call them into a, a timeout, you know, uh, take their toys, switch off the Wi-Fi, do something. And as they get older, they get more cheeky. You know, you, you have a relationship, but there's a little bit more arguments going in. Um, sometimes they rebel, now they want to come against the parents, and, and it's all kinds of drinking and smoking, doing all kinds of stupid things outside. It's almost like they on purpose want to do something to just irritate the mom and the dad. But then there's a time in the walk of the, of the son where he grows up, and he can't wait to come sit with the father and chat. Can't wait to come sit with his mom and just have a conversation and become friends and get to know each other. Because I don't have to discipline him anymore. I don't have to tell him what he can and can't do. We can now actually get to know each other. So as the maturity level of a son changes, he gets to be more intimate and enjoy the company of his father or his mother more. It's logic, right? I don't know if it's like that for you, but it makes sense to me because that's kind of how it was for me. And so Yahweh is saying, well, let's get to a point in our walk in maturity where we can begin to be in relationship with Him, where it's not just about a bunch of laws and rules and regulations and things that we have to do, because if we don't do it, oh, God's going to be angry, and He's not going to be loving me, and He's not going to be one me. He's not going to bless me anymore, and he, there's terrible things going to happen to me because I am a terrible person because I didn't do what He told me to do. You know, it, it has to come out of a different place. Does that make sense? He's calling a company of people that will understand what relationship is. It's literally sitting down and talking. Sitting down, allowing Him to breathe in and over you. Allowing Him to speak a frequency over you that enhances who you are. And when you release that exact same frequency into creation, it brings alignment. It restores all things. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? The Father's heart is knowing that Yahweh is our Father. Uh, let me just say, knowing that Yahweh is our Father is one thing. Choosing to pursue that relationship and allowing Him to father us is something else altogether. You know, I can have a father, but it doesn't mean that He's fathering me. Does that make sense? And I look at creation, and I don't see fathers fathering their children. They have children, or they have fathers, but there's no fathering. The function of a father is to teach. To teach his kids. You know, I was engaging with Enoch, not, uh, with uh, Isaiah once. And he said to me one thing. And Isaiah, I was engaging with him. He said one thing to me. He says, Gustav, be your son, your, your children's spiritual father. And I have, that's all I remember him saying to me. And that was my pursuit. To have my kids look up to me as a spiritual mentor to them. Now, of course, I'm their father, and there is a level of discipline, but I want them to know Yahweh, not because I'm forcing them to go to church and I'm forcing them to do the right thing. I want them to know Him because of who I am, what I do, how I live. And it's not some religious act. I am who I am. I do what I do. I say what I say when I want to say it, but I love Yahweh with all my heart. And they can see it and they do it. It's a different place. Does that make sense? 
See, I like calling a company of people that will, that will look at him and know him. And of course, remind yourself, I say we engage with the Father, but it's so much the Holy Spirit's desire, uh, Ruach Kadesh, for you to understand who Jesus is. That's his function. That's what Yeshua said. No, 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 you don't understand. I have to go. Because if I go, I can send Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit, to you so that he can teach you everything you need to know about me. And then when you know everything about me, you'll know everything about the Father. <coughs> and of course, the Father has a desire to bring you to a place where you know your position in his kingdom. His desire is that we share his heart. That we get to know his ways as well as his works. Yeah, so. <coughs> I'm sorry. Know his laws. Now I'm not saying laws in the sense of the Ten Commandments or some kind of a commandment that he shouts and screams at us. Yeah. Know his ways. Know his heartbeat. Know that his character, his personality, the things he would and wouldn't do. You know, if you know his character, it changes everything. Because you can read the Bible and you can listen to people preach and you can, you can sit in a, mess, uh, in a church and you can have a whole different God right before you. Right. And I know it sounds terrible because we read everything, everyone reads out of the same Bible. But I've heard some sermons out of the same Bible that I read that will flip my lid. <laughs> that if I was in, the, in that room, I would have stopped that man, take his mic, tell him to go sit down before I knock his front teeth out. <laughs> I actually almost did that once because I was in a meeting and I was the guest speaker and they were taking up offerings. And he said, you know, this is why God's angry at you. Because you don't tithe. It's a small community that is poor. The building costs nothing because it's a piece of thing that all falls apart in Africa. And they make almost, they make a fortune because the people are so scared not to tithe. They almost st stood up there because I started crying. I almost stood up and said, listen, you need to give me that mic and I need to start preaching because otherwise I'm going to slap somebody. <laughs> it's too much, too much whatever benefits me out of the word going on. Yeah. Yahweh wants the truth. That's why I said, you want to worship me, worship me in truth and in spirit. It's being in him that I'm sealed in truth. You might say, well, how do you know you're in him? You know, how do you know that what you say is true, good stuff? It lines up with who he is in character. It lines up with who Yahweh is in character. You guys okay? Yeah. No. Okay. As we carry his heart and grow in maturity, he will include us in the deliberations of the councils and assemblies of heaven. See, as we grow, his desire, matter of fact, his, his passion. And, and if you've ever been in the kingdom of heaven, you'll understand. Once, once sons walk in for the first time, it's like heaven stops. It's an excitement. There's a, a, literally a party that takes place because, yes, another son has risen. Another son can be trained and equipped to go into creation and change what needs to be changed, shift things into place. Can we begin to, to step into the order of the kingdom and begin to do and experience and have the things that's given to them to grow and to become what Yahweh desires for us to be? I mean, it's exciting, isn't it? His deepest desire is for his sons and daughters to return to the place of our conception within the recess of his heart. Now, I said this several thousand times. The first word in the Bible is in. And that's also the last word in the Bible, because the beginning is the end. You wouldn't start something that doesn't that end, end it first. So his end result for us is to be back in him. Amen. That's where the 12 strands is completely perfected. Amen. So that we can know, so we can truly know him and have a deep relationship of who we are, or a revelation on who we are as co-heirs and co-creators with him. Now remind yourself that I'm not just talking about the kingdom of heaven. I'm talking about the kingdom of earth as well. Because there's dimensions within what Yahweh has allocated to us that we have to govern. That's right. And the function that he is focusing on right now is for us to bring restoration to all creation. Because he's not going to do it. Now, I'm not going to say that he can't do it, but he won't. So really he can't. Because he made up, that's who he is. He, he is a just God. Once he said something, he has to do everything in his power to get that word out into creation, into full place. So when he says, let's give man dominion, that's his focus. That's what he needs to do. He needs to get you to the place where you understand who you are in creation. And the power that you carry within him. And the restoration that you need to receive for yourself first in full measure. Not just 
the, the discipleship that we've gone through. Because we have to be fully restored on this side of the veil and then fully restored on that side of the veil. Right. Exciting, isn't it? He also desires to restore everything about us. And you know, sometimes we don't really think about this, but if I am fully restored, I should literally glow in the dark. <laughs> It wants to restore everything about us, including our identity, position, authority, abilities, knowledge, wisdom, relationship, and connection to the creative order, or the created order, sorry. His desire for us is to understand all of heaven. I've heard this, this preached this several times. You can never know God. You know, it doesn't sound right to me, but in the same breath, it's kind of logic. It's an infinite God, right? But I'm a son. And if I live in him and move in him, have my being in him, it is inevitable that I'm going to know him. I'm going to know attributes and aspects of who he is that's not written, that's not spoken, that no one else has seen, unless you've lived in him. I'm going to be able to express who he is to creation in a way that others that's not been there might not even perceive or understand. I'm going to speak of a higher quality of revelation that people might not perceive because of the boxing that they had uh, uh, been taught previously. He desires to remove the limitations yes. of the, the finite <laughs> and the, the, the mortal nature of our minds and restore the limitlessness of our transcendent and infinite origins. Yeah. We are relational beings made in his image of limitless creative potential. And I've said this before, we are creative light, not created light. Every other species, every other created thing is created with created light. Creative light is the image set up from within him, from out of him, parts of him, DNA. That's the only species that has it. The only species that can carry his image. I love that. He never intended the limited, restricted, finite, mortal existence which mankind now experiences because of choosing the do-it-yourself path instead of the tree of life. Right. And, and when he talks about, when we talk about the do-it-yourself, it's the good and the bad and the right and the wrong. That's right. Because that's become the focus of the church. When I change my mindset and I begin to eat of life, then all of a sudden I begin to understand to the pure, all things are pure. Because I'm eating of another dimension of life that's not available on the side of the bench, <laughs> on this side of the veil. So I step in and I begin to see life, Zoe. That I see the tree of life. I see the dimensions that comes with who Yahweh is in Eden, who he is at his, on his throne, who he is in the chambers, who he is in the councils, who he is in, in the courts, who he is in the different places within creation. Sometimes he's my size, 6'2". Well, I don't really know what to call myself because I'm six foot one and a half. <laughs> and that is actually a true story. Because I'm 186 and 185 is 6'1 six and 187 is 6'2". <laughs> I'm in between there somewhere. But I would, he would appear to me at that size and we would be able to communicate verbally to each other. Other times he'll be a consuming fire. Other times he will be a light, a dimension of light that I can't express who I am to. I'm just in awe of the power that's radiating out of him. Sometimes he appears to me as people I know. You ever see in the shack? It offended some people, religious, blonde. I don't know how that can offend you, I'm sorry. I, just, I don't understand how that book can offend you in any way, fashion, or form. How are you guys doing? Are you getting this? Yeah. So he never intended for us to, to have limitations. It's restoration of sonship that encompasses the possibilities uh, far beyond the wildest dreams of even the most creative minds. Mm -hmm. It's like he says, no eye has seen, no, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined the things that await for those who love me. We love him. 
And we begin to understand, well, I can be with him. I can, where I am in my day, when I go to work, whether I'm at home with my family, whether I'm at, sh at the shop, whatever, whatever I'm busy doing, my spirit can be with him 24-7, no problem. Matter of fact, my spirit can be in my body, with my, with my being, and still be with him, and multiple other places at the same time. It's in his image, which means it can be omnipresent. It's the cognitive understanding that I need through my soul's restoration so that I know what my spirit man is doing. And of course, the idea behind the glorification of my soul and my body so I can begin to operate like my spirit does in dimensions. <laughs> Imagine eyes capable of seeing all wavelengths and light. Ears capable of hearing all ways, lengths and sound, of sound. Bodies capable of multidimensional travel and existence. Minds capable of creative expression. Bodies capable of in, 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 um, instantaneous healing. So we, we don't think of this stuff because it's not part of our DNA. This stuff is not being taught. We don't think that this is a possibility. Well, matter of fact, if I die, I'll be perfect. But, but we forget to remind ourselves that I already died. You cannot give your life to somebody and still live. So if you're still alive, then it just means you're not born from above. You haven't given your life to Yeshua. Because once you give your life to Him, it's no longer I who live. That's your key. That's your key to this. Because it's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by His face. I have elevated and the limitations that were set in creation, I was born into sin, is restored fully. Restored full restoration through the blood of Yeshua elevates me through the torn veil into the fullness of where I'm seated in Christ in the heavenly places. Yes. And then, of course, my spirit being in the kingdom of heaven, beginning to see, perceive, receive, understand the way of life, which is Zoe, understanding the dimensions of that glory and legislating that first into my soul, into my body, and then into creation. So that I can have an understanding and a greater knowledge, because knowledge is life. You can imagine doing the works Yeshua did and greater works, controlling the, the um, molecular structure of water, <laughs> becoming invisible, creating and um, manipulating matter, telepathy, telepathy, as knowing people's minds and thoughts. Well, Jesus, said, yes, he did. <laughs> well, look, he was a freak. Don't look at me with that tongue. <laughs> That's only 26 days of his three-year ministry that we read in the Gospels. 26 days of three years. So you have to understand, there are some things that we don't even know he did. It was incredible. There was no limit for him. He didn't think he could, or he didn't hope he could. He didn't try. He knew. Because he knew his father, and he wouldn't do anything he didn't see his father do. Now that should be our cue. Because if I can see my father, then why am I not seeing my father? If he shows my example, and I need to look at him to become what he is, then why can I not see my father? Why can I not go in the heavens? Why is it that Yeshua says, I went up onto a mountain? And if we understand the geographic where he was at, there was no mountain. Matter of fact, the closest mountain to him was 200 miles away. So what did he do? He quickly walked 200 miles, went and prayed for an hour and quickly went 200 miles back. Now he went up into the mountain, which is the mountain of the Lord, Zion. No limitations. It's the restoration of who we are that brings us to this point. Now, I say this, but I remind you, go back to the beginning where I said, well, there's only two things on Yahweh's mind. It's your restoration and creation's restoration. So, yes, His blood restored me, but I will never fully be in my restoration state if I don't understand, perceive, and walk in the things that Yahweh set out for me. I have to remind myself what the blood did. What am I restored into? There's a greater fullness than what we've understood up to this point. You guys okay? Yes. Creative thought, translation, pre and post cognition, time travel. Now, it all sounds crazy because there's movies like this out. But I want to remind you something. No one makes stuff up. It's either perversion of a truth, or it's the truth. 
And Yahweh, unfortunately, has to bring revelation into creation, even though the sons are not accepting it. So Hollywood has taken that responsibility. If you look at the last 10 years, the, the, the Marvel movies that came out, most of it is the teachings that we're doing today. The thing that we're talking about right now is that gateway that they opened. Now, it's always been open because it's a revelation that we've always carried. We're just afraid to speak of it. But we have to begin to take what's ours back. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. If we can imagine these things, then the true potential of restored sonship lies far, lies, lies right by us, if that makes any sense. Let me, let's look at uh, the father's priority or, or my personal priority. He said to me, son, listen, your sonship is the only priority you need to focus on right now. <laughs> the purity of restored relationship between the father and his sons and daughters is the deepest desire. The restoration of all things is its outworking. If I'm fully restored back into the heartbeat of my father and we have an intimate covenant relationship where we know each other and we work with each other and we do what needs to be done, everything else is going to come into full play. We can't restrict our understanding of engaging with the Father through what religious views has brought us. Because there's no limit. You guys okay? That is how they were designed to work. Sorry, what am I doing? I just skipped the whole section. So. Hmm. The purity of restored relationship between the father and his sons and daughters is his deepest desire. He, he, he's, he's craving this. If you know the father, this is what he wants. And it's, of course, not just for us, but for everybody. Yeah. This is the love agenda where all things of the created order will be returned to relational connectiveness within um, his unity. Listen, it says, it says, my sons, my daughters, no one who becomes um, intimately acquainted with, uh, with the thoughts and intentions of love revealed through knowing me could fall to fail to see their destiny within the desires of my heart. Wow, I love that. Because it's that dimension of intimacy that he craves. Now, I want to remind you that when I step in the Melchizedek order, my first priority is to have revelation of sonship. Because that is that which holds all the others together. So my covenant with Yahweh is my key. That's why my worship, my adoration, my expression, all of who I am is in the midst of the yad Hey vav Hey, the yad Hey shin vav Hey, Because the Shin is that dimension of the sun, me and you, propelled into the deity. If there's space for anything in Yahweh is for us. Now I say if, but we know there's space for us in Him. Because he left it there. That's what we restored. We restored back into him. Just as Paul wrote, Yahweh is continually working all things together for the good. That is how they were designed to work. All things were created to work together, unique and individual in themselves, yet only complete within the harmonious union of the whole. The removal of all fragmentation fracturedness and brokenness in all its forms is the ultimate goal of restoration. So when we begin to understand what we have the capacity to bring into creation through legislation and being oracles, now I say this because the power of speech as an oracle is much more powerful as a prophet. Now it doesn't mean that if you're a prophet and I'm an oracle that, that I'm better than you. Understand, it's different levels, it's the same thing. Being a, a, a prophet, being an oracle is the exact same thing. But you're shifting from this side of the veil into another dimension. You're going in beyond into the kingdom of heaven when Yahweh opens his mouth and uses you to speak. And the power that comes out of the breath of the sun has got the ability to create what's being said. And I've said this several times. So for me, it's not about how many people come to my meetings. It's the fact that I'm speaking into a place within a city and it's creating and... and, and um, 
progressing into creation. It's breaking open the ground because it's a living word. They might say, well, who do you think you are? Well, I'm in Christ. And I don't just say things because I think it's a good idea. I'm not trying to impress any of you whatsoever in any way, fashion, or form. I do this because this is on my scroll. But when I speak, it goes into the ground, it breaks open. It's for generations to come. And if you're in the midst and you grab and hold of it, run with it. It is a life-changing experience. You guys okay? He's looking at the personal restoration of spirit, soul, and body to the original intent, condition, and uh, um, function. The restoration of your spirit to relationship with God. Your spirit to eternal identity. Your spirit to all creation, physical and spiritual. Your DNA restored to its 12 strands. Now I say that and I remind you that when I'm in Christ, I am in my restorated state. It's where I live and move and have my being that I'm in that restorated state where I have all the strands back restored to me. Which if you understand, puts you in the position where you are a son, puts you in a position where you are a priest, because the priest had 12 breastplates, or 12 stones on his breastplate. You are restored to the king, you're restored to the oracle, you're restored to the legislator. And then that dimension of who you are, which is one, is propelled into creation for you to bring governance. Exciting, isn't it? (laughs) Everything within the soul, mind, emotion, will, conscience, imagination, reason, choice, restored to innocence. Can you imagine that? That you cannot think a foul thought. I think I just did. But can you imagine the day that we have brought restoration to all of creation, which means the next child that's born after we brought restoration is not born into sin. Can we even imagine something like that? Begin to, uh, to understand there will be a time in the dimensions that sons are growing and maturing now that Satan will have no grip. In creation, no place to hold on, no place to govern, no place to rule, no place in the hearts of no man. Right. Where sons have literally put him under their feet and there's no power, no principality, no ruler of darkness anywhere and no high place because we have restored all things back to its original state. Now the church never taught us that so it's never happened up to this point but now it's starting to happen. Right. And chaos is around us. But I tell you now, we are doing it and we are changing. We're bringing things into position and into place. And I love it. All brokenness, fragmentation, separation, isolation, and rejection, rejection restored. All needs met for harmony, relationships, intimacy, union, unity, love, joy, and peace. Mind restored to full creative capacity. Body restored to health and wholeness and all supernatural abilities. Let's just look at Jesus for one second. The crazy things he did. First of all, I mean, he gets baptized and a voice out of heaven speaks. I mean, that will kind of get my attention. Right? And immediately he starts doing crazy things. I mean, the water, he changed into wine. Listen, it was the bucket where the people washed their feet in. Did you know that? Don't look at me with that tone. It's nasty. And they're not just what. He made it the best wine they've ever seen. You can't drink beer. You're a Christian. You can't drink anything. Matter of fact, you can't have that. You got that. But Jesus turned wine and water into wine. How do we perceive things? Well, there is the fruits of the Spirit. And if you've grown and matured to the position you're supposed to be in, then you have what we call, you might not understand this, is self-control, right? It's like rocket science. <laughs> he made the wine for people that have already finished drinking all the other wine. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they were already drunk and probably passed out. So the ones who didn't drink now get to drink the fine wine. I don't know how that works. <laughs> but I mean, yes, you are. It's incredible. So when he steps into his ministry after 30 years, there's just so much happening. You know, he stands on the shore and an already established businessman 
leaves everything right there, his box, his everything, and follows Yeshua. I mean, that sounds crazy, right? You understand why he did it? Because Yeshua was a rabbi with authority and gave him a second chance. You don't get a second chance. Because every other rabbi, once you've fallen out of university or whatever they would call it, college, or you didn't make it as a rabbi, you had to fall back on your father's trade. That's it. There's no second chance for you. Yeshua comes after being baptized. Now, at your baptism, you need two witnesses to become a rabbi with authority. And as that happened, John, John the Baptist, and of course the voice from the sky, he comes in and he calls his disciples. And the ones he chose was already kicked out of university. They all get a second chance. That's why they leave what they do and they run for him. Because I get a second chance to become what every little boy and every little girl, well, I don't know if the little girls could become that, they couldn't. Every little boy wanted to be a rabbi. It was the job that everybody wanted. Why? Because you're very, very wealthy. Why? Uh, because everybody that follows you pays you a teruma. Which is a 40th of a day's wages. Every day. So for Yeshua, it was between five and 15,000 people every day. So it's, uh, what is it? about, it's about $2 out of $100. Is that right? Maybe less. I don't know. But he was a very wealthy man. Then, of course, he does things like he's on the edge of a cliff and they want to push him. But then he walks through them. And remember, your mind, your Greek mind says, oh, wow, the anointing and the glory that came out of hallelujah when they made a path for him. No, oh, they did not make no path. He walked through them. Why? Because illogically, when he came back, there was revival. When he came back, we were talking about him. Something happened. Why? Because the person he walked through went, somebody walked through me. How do you walk through somebody? Oh, well, you can only walk through somebody if your spirit is your host, not your body. Because if my body keeps being my host, there's no wall wall. Like I always say, in, in America, you can probably run through most walls. The rest of the walls are made of brick. But if my spirit is my governing body, then I can appear and disappear. Like Yeshua walked through people. He's in the synagogue. Or in, in the um, yeah, synagogue. I mean, that's what they call it, right? Yeah. And um, they want to kill him. So what happens? The Bible says, and he hid himself in the temple. And they could by no means see him. Now, our perception immediately is it's a room like this. And he probably hit one of these walls somewhere and they couldn't see him. No, it's a tent with one little thing in the middle. You, there's no place to hide. But he shifted into his spirit and disappeared. And they could by no means see him. <laughs> I mean, that's just the small little things. And of course, we don't even talk about his glorified state where he could change his appearance. Mm -hmm. Where he could appear and disappear. Walk on water. I don't know anybody in today's world as son of Yahweh that's walking on water. There's a YouTube video of a magician that walks on some lake in England somewhere. Which is pretty impressive, pretty crazy. Within minutes, he's got like thousands of people around him wanting to see what he's doing. And then he gets arrested because you're not allowed to be in the water if you're not in a boat. <laughs> oh, the demonic, I don't know. He stands next to a bus, puts his hand out and then elevates to the roof of the bus and then travels like that right through the city and comes back and descends. Now that's a perversion of what the sons are meant to be walking in. Now when we get to that point, we're not gonna be standing next to a bus and elevate. We're not going to be walking on, a wa on water in the middle of a city. You know, Yahweh is going to be our blueprints. He's going to show us where and what and how to do things. Because we can't just randomly go do things that we think will impress others. You guys okay? Yeah. Yeshua is setting a place, an example for us to begin to follow. You know, we look at him and we think, oh, I can never be like him. Okay, well, that's dumb because he's your example. Only reason Yeshua came into creation, because remind yourself, the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth. He didn't have to come into creation. But he comes into a, into a time, into a space where we can look at him and see what a son is meant to be, what a son is meant to do, how a son expresses the love he has for the Father, how a son that is fully in a state of perfection goes into creation and begins to heal those that need healing, restores things into his full position. I just, I just like that. See, his desire to restore the breath of life, 
Restore destiny and purpose. Restore inheritance, identity, birthright, position, authority. A spirit beings, this is your elevation, this is the growth. From spirit being to living being to God-like being. That's the change that has to be in my body. In all of who I am. You guys okay? This is a phase of change that we're busy with. We're, we're spirit beings now. He wants us to shift into being living beings and understand what that even represents. Because the living being has a dimension of the soul restora fully restored. So it's a two-part two part species. But it still has a body, but it functions as a two-part species in creation. Because my soul and my body can operate together in the kingdom of heaven and travel in different nations. But once I am a God-like being, my body, soul, and spirit is fully glorified. Now you might think, well, that's impossible. There's people in creation right now, as we speak, that's already mastered that. Correct. So it's not just a myth. It's not just something we like to say that it sounds good. It's actually out there. Why? Because the level you engage the Father will be the level that you elevate into Him. That's right. That shalom... That wholeness and peace will carry an ex, uh, on expanding. There will, be, um, there will never be an end to its increase within his ever-increasing kingdom. This is you understanding the expansion that Yahweh has for us as sons. That expansion that he has for us in the revelation that needs to come to us to begin to understand the things that's coming to us right now. And there's more than what we can fathom. And we are intended to be instrumental in the government of that kingdom. The restoration of our relationship as sons must lead to our exercising responsibility um, with our sonship. There's extreme responsibility. But it's not a fear. It's not something we are afraid because in the point, in the place that we walk, there's no failure. You don't understand that in the kingdom of heaven there's no failure. There's no sickness and disease, there's no limitations, there's no, there's no bad, there's no wrong. Because it's not a part of your vocabulary, it's not part of your DNA, it's not part of who you are. We will learn to rule, not only over what is already created, but over what we will create. <laughs> we already have the ability to create, however, because of lost identity, we have... Um, created mainly chaos. That is funny. I mean, we think we don't create, but yeah, we do. We create a big fat mess everywhere we go. Very talented. Chaos. So if we can create chaos, we can create anything else. But because our focus has always been on the wrong and the negative and the not right and the always bad and it's not brute, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that, it's not good. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know if I can, can't. No, love Him, walk in Him, know Him, and He will direct your steps. Because if to the pure, all things are pure, how is that even a thing? How can I even begin to fathom that? All things cannot possibly be pure. I don't understand that, right? But if you've lived and moved and had your being in Him, your mindset, your perception, your view, your belief system has changed. We will learn to rule. Yes. That is so key. Knowing our identity and uh, uh, restored to sonship, our capacity to create beauty and order will increasingly manifest around us. The restoration of the sons of Yahweh will be like Joseph coming out of the, the dungeon prison to take up the second highest position in Egypt. Can we even begin to see that story? Ooh, that's, that's my walk with Yahweh. But I know the end result. I might start off as a, as a child of my father and it looks good and looks great. Before I know it, I'm in a pit getting sold as a slave. But everywhere I put my foot, I elevate and rule and govern and become what I'm supposed to be. Then some bad shit happens to me. What do I do? I, I don't stop. I don't quit. I pro proceed in that mess until it becomes a message. And I elevate and grow in that position, in that place, just like he did. He didn't do anything wrong, but he had to go to jail. And so what did he do? Well, I'll rule the jail. And from that place, he got his position. 
That is, that is the story of our lives. I have to understand my position. It's what I need to elevate, be elevated back into. It's at my father's hand. It was second in charge. You know, oh, no, Jesus. No, it's, it's, it's Yahweh is God in his full measure. Father is an attribute. Yeshua is an attribute. Ruach HaKadosh is an attribute. You have to understand this stuff. I can't engage one without the other. I can't neglect one because I only speak to Jesus. Now, they are one being. There is one throne. If you understand the capacity that they want to release to us, this is the knowledge. That's why I step into Yod, Hei, Vav, Hei, and it's the name that I step into. It's the dimension of who God is, Yahweh, that I step into, that overshadows every dimension of who He is to me in revelation, knowledge, and understanding. We will emerge from uh, obscurity and shame to be invested, enthroned, seated in heavenly places, ruling and reigning as the, the mountains of the house of God. I mean, this is exciting stuff, right? Now, just listening to this message, just, just speaking it and being able to, to read through these notes and understand that there's so much waiting for us. Let's just get into it. Yes. And I say, well, it's taking so long. No, it's actually not taking long. You know, when, when Moses reached his potential, he was 80 years old or 120 years old. 80, right? Hey, 80, going once, going yeah. twice. It's old. It was 80. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's a long time to start your destiny. So there's 80 years of preparation, but it served him well. So we think, well, why are they taking so long? Well, we have to change everything we believe. We have to reinvent dimensions of truth for us to live by. Because we've, we've had to add two realms of the Word of God because we've only had one portion, which means we've only had a portion of the truth. That's why things didn't quite fit into each other. It didn't quite work out as it should have. But now that we have the fullness of the word, we're engaging with the living letters and that dimension of revelation is coming to us. There's a fullness that we are walking in that is changing the world. And we are growing into it daily, every day. I mean, Ian Clayton, one of my mentors, he's been in it for 40 years. 40 years, that's a long time. But he's on the same road as what I'm on. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're all on the same road. We just need to keep walking. I'm never going to get to that place. I'm never going to get where they are. No, of course you are. You stay on the same road. They're walking. You're walking. You're going to pass the same places they pass. You're going to get to the same point they are. You're going to get there. But your responsibility is to keep walking. But I don't understand it. So what do you do when you don't understand something? Engage it. Search it. Sit in it. Let it unfold to you. Don't just leave it. Don't just walk off. Don't just get irritated while well, you yeah. You know, I don't understand 90% of the things Ian Clayton is teaching right now. It's gibberish. But every time I listen to him teach, I go into his gate. I come out of that gate with revelation I did not have before I went in there. They said, what's the point of him teaching? Well, there's somebody that's going to listen. And again, we're speaking into creation. We're breaking open the ground for revelation. And when I, when I reach a point in my walk, I can go there and take it. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Let's stand. Well, before you guys stand, you can sit again. Sorry, my apologies. Gracie has a word for us, please. Two minutes. Thank you, Gracie. Thank you. Well, Father, help me tonight with this word. Jeremiah 333. Call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not. Um, I'm going to blow the show for, for the angels to come, uh, warrior angels, and whatever kind of angels God needs to take the words I'm going to speak. <laughs> God always tells me, um, I will cause my breath to enter into you and you shall live. <laughs> so I live by that scripture. Wow. Baruch Hashem, yo Vav Bless the name I am. 
God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Baruch Hashem Akal Esh. Bless the name consuming fire. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. We thank you, Lord, that the angels are taking, uh, Los Angeles are taking your fire, the fire of God, the fuego de Dios. We are taking this fire to the uh, four ends of the earth, north, south, east, and west. Baruch Hashem, Jehovah Sabaoth. Bless the name, the Lord of hosts. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the Mighty One of Israel declares, I will vent my wrath on my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. The Lord wants me to read that two more times. Baruch Hashem, Jehovah Sabaoth, bless the name the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the Mighty One of Israel declares, I will vent my wrath on my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. Baruch Hashem, Jehovah Sabaoth, bless the name the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the mighty one of Israel declares, I will vent my wrath on my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. Baruch Hashem, Jehovah Nisi, bless the name, the Lord, my banner. And God, we thank you that you are a banner over us. You're our, your remnant in the world. You are a holy remnant over, you are a holy banner over your <coughs> Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. And we thank you, um, Captain of the Lord of Hosts. And um, the battle belongs to the Lord, and he's also giving his sons the, the plans. No, well, help me God. Baruch Hashem, Emmanuel, God with us. And I thank God. God is with us every day. He's with us every night. He's with us every step of the way. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And I'm going to blow the show for five more times. And uh, bless all the angels, uh, the warrior angels, the whatever kind of angels that we needed. Bless all the angels that are going out with these words and delivering these words. And we just um, bless you, yo hey bob hey. Help me God. <laughs> I believe I'm going to blow it 11 more times for uh, 2021 because God is doing something very powerful this year in 2021. So, Father, I ask for more breath from heaven so that I can blow the shofar. <laughs> Help me, God. Help me, God. <laughs> Father, we just want to glorify and magnify and exalt your incredible, phenomenal, beautiful name. It is so true. There is just something awaiting the sun that we can't even express or even begin to think of. It's just beyond what we, we walked in before. So, Father, we want to honor you, praise you, worship you. We want to thank you for what you have placed into creation, Father, the order that's set. That we get to go into the heavens and be trained and equipped. By the seven spirits, get to understand and receive and perceive things that we could never understand or perceive on the other side of the veil. 
that we begin to understand that we have governance in creation and we need to take back what belongs to us. Father, you have taught us, you're busy aligning us, propelling us, and it's an incredible time. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you, my King. You are majestic, you are beautiful. I ask that you will propel everyone in this room to a new place and you a deeper place. Father, let's begin to understand the beauty that you have for us and begin to walk in it. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen.